Holy rational functions. It's time for vertical and horizontal asymptotes, baby. Oh my God, there's like people right there. They're gonna get me. So let's say if you're given a function like this, it's a rational function because it's like a fraction. There's things on top and things on bottom. The things on top are gonna tell you your zeros. Just like when you did quadratic functions, you have a zero in your graph at x is positive two and another one at x is negative six. Just like normal, just read the top. Don't look at the bottom if you're talking about zeros. The bottom only tells you about the vertical asymptotes and you only get vertical asymptotes from the bottom. The vertical asymptotes here are gonna be x equals negative three and x equals positive two if you're looking at those functions factors only. Now, you won't always get the problem looking like this, all convenient and nicely packaged into factors. Sometimes it will be given to you like this. So you might have to factor. If they give it to you in little quadratics that are not in beautiful little packaged factors, then you have to factor it. You have to use your backfoiling skills and figure out this version of the same thing. These are the same thing. Try it. You can try it. It's the same thing. Um, you have to get it into this form before you can do anything else. So if you see this, first thing to do is factor. So we have two things figured out. We know the zeros come from the top, the vertical asymptotes come from the bottom, and when they're in factored form, we can figure them out no problem. If there's a coefficient in front of it, forget it. Not, not a thing. Um, what about the horizontal asymptotes? What about holes? Um, so I kind of lied to you about there being two vertical asymptotes because one of these two vertical asymptotes is not really a vertical asymptote, it is a hole. Can you tell which one? It is the one that is repeated in the top. So anytime you have a factor that's identical on top and bottom, they cancel out and it's a hole in the graph, not an asymptote. Okay, so now I crossed out the two factors that are identical that defines my hole. And so there is now a hole at x equals two, not a zero, not an asymptote, just a hole. Line, hole, continue the line. And where do we get our horizontal asymptote? From the top or the bottom? Actually, we get our horizontal asymptote from comparing the top of the bottom. And what we're comparing is the degrees. So is it a second degree, third degree, first degree, nothing degree? Um, in my case, they are equal. They are both, actually they were second degree each because even though I canceled out the factors, they're still in the original x squared something over x squared something. So just in case y'all forgot, first degree means that our highest term is a single x. Second degree means our highest term is x squared. Third degree means our highest term is x cubed. See how I threw in a little trick on you? Because remember, they might not write it in descending order. So you might have to go searching around for the highest degree. It might not be the very first term. It usually is, but it might not be. So that's what you're comparing in the top and bottom when you're trying to figure out what is the horizontal asymptote. So if the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, then there's no horizontal asymptote and there might be a slant asymptote and I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Um, if they are equal, if the degrees are equal, then you have to use the coefficients. So I went ahead and just made up coefficients in this example to show that if the coefficients were three and two, then your horizontal asymptote would be a horizontal line, which is y equals three halves. So you literally go in your graph, you find three halves on the y-axis, and then you just draw a horizontal line from there. If your degrees is smaller in the top than in the bottom, then your horizontal asymptote is just the x-axis, y equals zero, and it's super awesome and easy. Oh no! <laughs> so check it out. Since my original equation was equal degrees on top and bottom, then I'm gonna just use the coefficients. I didn't put any coefficients on this one, so it's just one over one, so y equals one. I'm gonna say there's a horizontal line, a horizontal asymptote at y equals one. Okay, and I still have the vertical asymptote at x equals negative three from what was up here left over from when I crossed out the hole, I still have this. 
and I still have my zero from the top. I still have this x plus six, so I still have a zero at x equals negative six. So that's my only tag to tell me where this graph is gonna actually be. Um, I also know there's a hole at x equals two, but I don't know what the y coordinate of that hole is because that's on the graph, that's on the actual line. So I have to actually go in and you know you can use your calculator, you can make up an xy plot and just start plugging in numbers, plugging in sample x's and figuring out where it is and then draw a hole whenever you get to that x equals two and the graph looks like it's approaching it, just draw an empty dot because <laughs> that's where it is. Um, so that is all. I would love to try to draw you the graph, but I'm in the mall and I'm kind of scared that like someone's going to wonder what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go. Happy awesome totes.